fuck it. All right, hey, Jim. I don't know how long I just recorded. I recorded from uh, the gas station by my dad's place on Chautauqua to uh, North Creek Road. I just drove under. Um, and I, I was thinking about coming down to, uh, to see uh, you and my dad. Um, at some point between like Wednesday and whatever the next weekend when I'm assuming you're leaving, he said about 10 days, try to come down and fly a little bit and, you know, catch up with, catch up with you a little bit, um, and, you know, spend a little bit of time with my dad and one of his good friends, you know, because you're not, uh, we, you know, nobody has a perfect relationship and sometimes people have some shit that happens in the past, which nobody likes, um, but... I figure we're, uh, I figure we're all right, um, and that be, not being certainly very familiar in the short term, uh, far less familiar than my Baba, I think you might find me, like, considerably amusing, you know, for a couple hours, have a beer, fly some planes, you know, like, just have fun, and realize, yeah, you know what, at this, at today, Rob's probably gonna say a bunch of fucking crazy shit, like, but if we just think, oh, he's a children's author, essentially, and kids love this shit, and then maybe it actually becomes a lot less stressful to you and my dad. You know, um, seven-year-old men are not ten-year-olds, obviously. You don't have the same uh, anything, really, as a ten-year-old. You have your humanity and, and, and love, and uh, there's a lot of things that are the same with a ten-year-old and a seven-year-old. But, like, what you're interested in might change plasticity of your brain, like, you not, you might not want to, um, absorb and write tons of good shit in your brain, and if you do that, like, it would probably be, like, you're going specifically to some place on the internet, right, or to a lecture or to a movie, where you're specifically trying to get a bunch of information, like, you wouldn't really be doing that for me at a flying field near my father's house, um, I mean, one thing that I'm hugely into, into uh, uh, that, that Chris, it's so weird, it triggers Chris in like this crazy way, it's just, and it's just share ports. It's really just shared airports, right? And the rich people do that. They build flying communities. But you can, with especially with the electric revolution on its way, you can build beautiful, you can basically build high concentration trailer parks in the middle of nowhere um, but probably with access to some kind of, uh, throughway exit, uh, and, and cater to people who essentially all do like to fly, and at the very least, in re return for accepting some compromises in, in the subdivision of the community, the shareport being built, would literally be able to literally just schedule at least one of the small electrics or even a glider uh, and take it flying. And then at the end of the month or the end of the year, have your true total consumption of the utility and the energy and the all, all costs, all in costs of your utilization of whatever that aircraft uh, matched exactly to what you're asked to pay. No profits, none of that shit. You would be moving into a place like this, investing some money, even if you rent the houses, you might be investing in the town at the same time to facilitate something like a, a beautiful inductive runway. Now, I don't think that an electric airplane taking off uh, just till it leaves the ground is is going to be using like more than 10% of its energy to fly, but 10% is not nothing. I mean, you get 10 of those and shit's over. Uh, but I do think that an inductive runway that could feed, basically the, the airplane might have a small tail that would, like, kind of like the catapult on an aircraft carrier, except for not mechanical. Like, if the plane just would launch up into the air, it would definitely separate the, the, the connector. Like, no doubt, maybe it literally would just plug in. It literally might plug in the airplane and have a little sled in the middle of the runway. Or, I mean, with gliders, we could put a track in the middle of the runway, connect the glider directly to that sled, and then 
the glider might only have like one wheel under its uh, under its center line, and maybe it would have two fold down uh, balance wheels uh, at, at the ends of, uh, of, this, of the wingspan. Um, Should be, I should be dancing the music, not talking to you, Jim. I'm, I'm like, beat the fuck up. Even my like, sense, extra sensitive to shit, I feel like my eyes bothering me, but I think it's really just that my left eye, my left eye and my, my right eye are receiving like very different uh, lights, very different levels of light and kinds of light. I have two displays to the right and a real light to the left. It might, it's just kind of making me eyes feel like shit. Now, there's a much smaller version of a shareport. What a shareport would be by you would be finding another piece of land or going to the existing flying field and basically getting together with a couple hundred guys or families. Maybe you could find families of young kids where the parents are sure that they're going to want to do remote control shit and basically invest together to not only improve the property, not only to build a run, maybe even an inductive runway in that case, but to also build a, build a, maybe a tiny a tiny workshop, have a battery charging station, right? Because if you have an airport like this and you really integrate it, you can probably buy your own cells. Uh, most grown-ass men like in, 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 the number, in the hundreds are going to have some... Uh, Electricians, some electronic technicians, some computer guys, um, some motor guys. So you probably, as you're going to build a, sh a fleet for the shareport, you would, if you're going pure electric, which I think for the most part a lot of them would, maybe one day a week or something, or maybe they'd have a day when people bring their old gas planes. But the thing with the shareport is it has its own planes, right? Like it has one of each of Actually, probably two, one of each of history's famous aircraft, right? Like, it would have a 13-foot wingspan spruce goose. Now, it's possible that since if all these aircraft were electric, um, that there would be speakers on the ground or even in the airplane to duplicate the sound. You don't really want a totally silent spruce goose. Or... Everyone that comes to the airfield would have to wear headphones. Those headphones, in a normal situation, might protect your ears from loud noises. But with, at a shareport, those headphones would be how you hear what you want to hear. You'd certainly hear emergency alerts if such a thing happened. You'd hear the sounds of the airplanes you wanted to hear. And a number of these headsets actually just, in a future version, would just fold down right in front of your eyes and, and would basically give you a VR view of the cockpit of the airplane you're flying. In a really advanced version, uh, next to the runway, there would be essentially like a controller station, a hard-mounted radio, mounted so that it could turn 360 degrees, so that it would always follow uh, the airplane in question. And it might even look like it had an anti-aircraft gun, which would probably just be... Um, uh, like a, a sniper, like a, a, a sniper, cam, uh, a sniper lens. So you'd like, you could either sit there and automatically track the airplane and zoom in as much as you want, or while the the, the the fake gun barrel, you know, scope was still tracking the airplane, you could go to first person view. and fly the airplane from inside the airplane. Now, it probably wouldn't be that hard to, if we're building a whole fleet, not that you want guns on a spruce goose, but to add some kind of impact based, like couple shot uh, gun to the airplanes, to the fleet. Um, or maybe a lot of the planes just don't have that, but there's a, really cheap like maybe we learn how to stamp out uh electric p51 bodies one piece um and maybe uh f22 bodies one piece and to those we would each attach an under pod 
and with that pod maybe now and then, you could actually, in fact, take a shot at somebody else. Uh, doing that uh, <laughs> from ground perspective is probably like, you'd, ba you'd basically be like, maybe we'd say it costs a quarter for everyone to take a shot. It's part of how we help to finance the airfield. You want to shoot something at another plane, it's a quarter. Um, shooting it from the ground not looking through the, 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 the perspective of the cockpit of the airplane would probably be something where if you actually knock another, if you actually structurally cripple another plane and cause its parachute to activate, um, you'd probably like win that airplane. Like any airplane you shoot out of the sky, I actually think that you'd, you'd, you'd win that airplane. Booth. Shareports basically allow like a couple hundred, like in near a city, you basically, I think you build a campground like around the airport, around the shareport. Maybe, maybe you even place, uh, you know, those metal hangers. Maybe we literally just get some kind of flexible composite and and just with insult, maybe with a sa sandwiched over insulation, and we would just bend it down and like we lay tracks like off the, off far enough from the runway, and and just bend them and snap them in and, and put a half circle on the end and like open it like a mailbox and it says you can these are your tents if you want to come like if you're coming if if the share port is an hour and you know ten minutes away from uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Like, maybe we just need more people. You know, it's not that big of a deal to get up uh, for, like, an old, older, retired people, certainly, if they want, to get up at 8 in the morning, have coffee, have breakfast, drive from 9 to 10, 15 to go to the share port, spend all day there, you know, and then drive home. How much? $1.80. Um, but so share ports are great. You can you can buy like electric and and, and the other thing share ports can do for anyone who's not part of the share port, you can advertise to the surrounding community and say We're, we've jumped back from RC. Although you can do both. Um, you can say, listen, hey kids, like we have or like kids even sixteen. Want to learn to fly? We have electric trainers. The crazy shit is that the ideal, maybe the ideal electric trainer has no instructor at all, right? Like, it's. It, I think it's actually easier for uh, a self-piloting or a self backup piloting or piloting uh, a small, stable electric airplane safer than driving a car on a, in a really crowded, complex, two-dimensional street system. So, you want to save weight, get rid of the 200 pounds of the instructor, or have a triple redundant remote-controlled system so that the pilot, the constructor, literally sits on the ground. The pilot is in the first-person perspective system, able to take over the plane at any time. And maybe with a backup AI, I guess the fucking instructor dies uh, while the kid's flying. They probably would have an AI backup. Parachute adds weight too, but if you get rid of the instructor, that's like a 200 pound parachute system you can add. Using the right deployment, like using a reverse JATO system or something, I think that a, a parachute can be open fast as fuck. But let's just say we get rid of the instructor, we have single seat, very lightweight. They're almost gliders, but they're not. Um, training aircraft. Incredibly fucking light. Um, I mean, you can, you can, you could build a runway that was sort of like a V, right? The wings could have flexibility to them. Maybe they actually come up a bit when you take off, but when you're on the runway, on the, when you land on the runway, all you would have to necessarily do as a rookie is line up the fuselage 
and settle it into its own groove. And maybe in that case, maybe the bottom of the aircraft might actually be ferrous metal. Um, maybe a bit of a, a, a pseudo bathtub for some protection. Um, something for the like seat cushioning to found itself on something that wouldn't maybe disintegrate if you did have an incident close to the ground and the parachute fired hard. The parachute actually fired hard enough that although the parachute was there to prevent you from, well, from accelerating into the ground, the force of the, I mean, the non-fired Jado parachute uh, inflation system would um, actually push the airplane down. Uh, a little bit faster in the, in the ultra short term. But we could train kids to fly for hundreds of dollars. They learn online, we absolutely run them through a simulator where they're flying like true to life, full scale models in first person, just like they're flying. Before they really fly, they fly them remote controlled and then we put them in them. So the 200 pound weight saving for the pilot is is also 200 pounds more batteries you could add if a person wanted to go up for a long flight. It could be a 200 pound fuel cell, it could be a 200 pound turbine, it could be a fucking 10 pound turbine and 190 pounds of fuel with no instructor, which is amazing. What is today? Sunday, right? It's like the end of summer, it's just pouring. Oh shit, uh oh. The end of summer, it's just pouring like a motherfucker. Oh shit, okay, we definitely want to over. And, oh, it's just uh, some incident on the road. fucking hard rear end with a friend who is I think probably their friend driving a, a truck with a nice motorcycle on the back probably just got back from some fun and now the rear end of uh, his car is absolutely trash I didn't see the other car but something hit that dude pretty hard I would love to have a massager in, in the seat of my car right now um, I'd probably love to have pulsating heat and cold. Like I, I, right now, I feel like being bougie wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for me. I have about $250 left on my, cred on my credit card. It's supposed to last until the 25th, which you'll never do. I mean, I owe Tia $1,250. I probably have 300 in the bank. I don't know. I didn't keep track of shit this summer except my brain, my work, my dreams, my ideas, and how to make the case for them. I'm gonna take a break. Jim, I hope I get to see you down there. I wonder if you made it all the way through. It's only 18 minutes, so it's like, maybe.